Construction for Dubai's Specialty Children's Hospital underway. UAE economy expected to grow 4.2% in 2011. And Japan's PM visits Fukushima as large-scale decontamination begins. This is 7 National News. In our top story this evening, Dubai Health Authority announced today that the second phase of construction work has commenced for Al Jalila Children's Specialty Hospital. The project is a visionary initiative by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, that is aimed at providing world-class health care for children in the UAE as well as the region. Khadija Sali has this report. Dubai Health Authority says there is still a need for 6,000 hospital beds in the Emirate. At present, there are less than 5,000 in existence. However, His Excellency Qadi Said Al Murushid, Director General of DHA, expressed confidence that between the public and private sectors, their goal will become a reality in the next two years. Hence, the addition of Al Jalila Children's Specialty Hospital is essential. The 673 million dirham project will provide premium health care to children from newborns to 16-year-olds. His Highness vision it is realizing the need for a specialized hospital for our young children. And also he, he realizes that the need for the country and the region. And this is why it is considered as a, as a, a gift. And he is uh, making sure that uh, we are working hard to make sure that it will be up to his expectation. The 200-bed hospital sprawling over 100,000 square meters is set in the al Wasal Hospital campus. It will provide the entire range of children's health care including oncology, nephrology, cardiac care and neonatal care. This hospital it is going to be reflecting our uh, Dubai government strategy where in the health sector that we need to provide an access and the quality for our community. DHA signed today an agreement with Alpha Team Carillion and announced that the second phase of the hospital's construction is well underway. In addition to the super specialty and multi spectrum pediatric care, they say the facility will also be sustainable as it incorporates the latest in technology and green building. It's an environment in which children will be able to enjoy themselves. There's lots of open space, there's lots of colour, there's lots of activities for the children for them to be able to do whilst they're recovering. So they will enjoy the environment. There's large open areas, there's a lot of planting, a lot of green aspects of the hospital. The hospital itself has been built as a sustainable hospital uh, in order for the energy consumption to be, to be controlled. And it, the whole concept is that you have a hospital which can be developed further in the future. Work on the hospital is expected to finish in 26 months. Upon its completion, Al Jalila Hospital will perhaps become one of the most important landmarks in Dubai and by far the most important gift children across the UAE and the region will ever receive. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. In a lead-up to the observance of World Osteoporosis Day, Fonterra, a global leader in dairy nutrition, has revealed alarming results of its recent survey. According to nutrition experts, osteoporosis in the UAE could become one of the leading health threats if not addressed soon enough. They say there is a lack of awareness in the community about the bone condition that could lead to disfigurement and a rise in death, particularly among women. The survey revealed that over 40% of women in the UAE are at risk and are not getting enough sunlight which is an essential source of vitamin D. In addition, 61% of women had zero to moderate concerns about osteoporosis and over 55% only think about bone health from age 30 onwards. Despite these statistics, ex experts say there are easy steps to prevent the onset of bone deterioration. We found 40% uh, uh, of women don't get enough exposure to sun every day. We also asked about exercise habits. We know we need daily exercise to maintain the strength of our bones. And we found that about 60% of women, no matter what nationality, probably only exercise once a week, if that. So what we found is these risk factors combining together are really contributing to the problem.
that as a nation we're probably going to see a rapid increase in osteoporosis in the future. We can start an exercise regime, it doesn't have to be very, very intense, just 30 minutes of walking a day can be enough, and also look for vitamin D fortified foods. So you can now get high calcium milks that also have vitamin D in them, you need to start incorporating maybe two glasses a day in your diet, then you don't need to worry about sunlight exposure or eating a mountain of fish a day or these kind of things that are required. It can be very, very simple. In addition to vitamin D deficiency, they say improper diet and an inactive lifestyle among residents are also contributing factors. So many people think they don't have time for exercise, they can't fit it into their day and actually although we say you should do exercise 30 minutes a day, you, you know, to, to find that time you really need to make exercise fun and make it a social event and something that you really want to do and not something that you're dreading for the alarm clock to go off each morning. So the important thing to remember is there's so much choice in, in, in the UAE. Dubai will play host to the first of its kind Asia-Pacific Conference on Giftedness in 2012 after competing closely against Hong Kong. The 12th Asia-Pacific Conference on Giftedness will see over 1,500 students and industry experts from the Asia-Pacific region converge on Dubai next July, as well as 500 locals. At a press conference today, the Minister of Education, His Excellency Humaid Mohammed Al-Khatimi, thanked the UAE and the Hamad bin Rashid Al Maktoum Award for hosting Giftedness 2012. The conference, which was last held in Sydney, Australia in 2010, aims at cementing the region's commitment and consolidating the development of world-class standards and best practices for gifted and talented students within the Asia-Pacific region and particularly the UAE. We are targeting the uh, people who are interested in giftedness, uh, especially this is a new area of development and education in the United Arab Emirates. It's one of the major priorities of educational system in the United Arab Emirates. Therefore, I think it's very important to exchange ideas and best practices uh, in the world. So therefore, we'll be inviting experts uh, who, who have uh, significant uh, uh, accomplishments uh, in the area of giftedness to come to Dubai and share with, share with us their uh, experiences. Dubai's Road and Transport Authority is now offering a safe taxi service at an extra charge of 25 dirhams at flagfall as opposed to the standard 20 dirhams. The In Safe Hands taxi service uses around 60 taxi drivers who hold zero traffic offences or customer complaints against them. Customers also have the option of selecting the gender of the driver. Fares will be set at 1.71 dirhams per kilometre and 50 fills per minute for waiting time. As of the 1st of January 2012, the Indian Embassy in the UAE and the Indian Consulate in Dubai will only accept online visa applications for tourists and visa, visit visas to India. According to a local paper, the Indian Ambassador to the UAE, Mr M K Lokesh, stated that the Indian government has made the online application process mandatory from next year. He added that an optional introductory version has been launched as of today and visa processing will take a minimum of three days. Officials added that visa application fees will remain the same at 150 dirhams for a tourist visa and 1,400 dirhams for a business visa. Around 80,000 visa applications to India are processed processed in the UAE each year. Looking to news abroad now, the Japanese Prime Minister visited Fukushima Prefecture today, home to the tsunami-crippled Daiichi nuclear plant as large-scale decontamination begins across the zone. Fukushima City began a city-wide clean-up today as residents look to deal with the aftermath of Japan's March 11 earthquake, tsunami and subsequent nuclear crisis. The clean-up effort will involve de decontaminating 110,000 homes, in addition to public facilities and roads to schools, in what local media Media reported as the first decontamination of such a scale in the country. The reactors suffered nuclear fuel meltdowns in the first days of the crisis as the water which was meant to cool them evaporated after the tsunami knocked out their cooling systems. The Prime Minister visited evacuees from around the plant who are now living in temporary housing with many voicing concerns as to whether they would ever be able to return to their homes now located in the 20-kilometre nuclear no-go zone. 
And rough weather today for salvage teams to halt pumping oil from the stricken container ship off New Zealand coast in what is the country's worst environmental disaster in decades. The Liberian flagged Rena has been stuck for 13 days now. It has already spilled about 350 tonnes of thick toxic fuel and some of its hundreds of containers into the sea. Winds gusting up to 65 kilometres per hour and sea swells cresting as high as 4 metres forced the evacuation of teams from the ship. Earlier in the day, salvage crews were hoisted on Rena by helicopter, but again had to be evacuated when the weather worsened. Authorities have been concerned that bad weather could possibly send the stern section, which contains more than 1,000 tonnes of oil, into the water. Meanwhile, the ship's captain and second officer, both from the Philippines, are due to reappear in court on Wednesday. And up next, we have the day's business news for you, so stay with us.